Hello, I'm Dan Anderson, and I'm here to tell you about a trip that Kurt Bender, Don Hastings, Jeremy Mahler, and I took to the Central African Republic this past February. We were part of a joint project sponsored by the HCJB Global Technology Center and Integrated Community Development International. The Central African Republic is a small country, about the size of the state of Texas in land area. It has a population of a little under 4 million and is one of the poorest countries. Our project had two main goals. The first was the installation of a Christian shortwave radio station in the Central African Republic. This station would broadcast the gospel and community development information throughout the country. And second was the installation of satellite internet connections. While in the capital city of Bangui, we stayed here at the Baptist Mid-Missions Guest House. One of the highlights of being in Bangui on the weekends was attending church services. We went to the Kasai Grace Brethren Church, and although the service was in Sango, which we didn't understand, and it was hot in the building, we thoroughly enjoyed the music. After church, we would mingle with the congregation, and the children were especially a lot of fun. Did they ever love to have their picture taken? And were they enthusiastic? Our first Monday morning in Bangui, we were all ready to take off for Buwali, where the new radio transmitter was located. However, one of our vehicles wasn't quite ready to go and we soon learned that vehicles would prove to be a problem throughout our stay here in Africa. Eventually we got a replacement vehicle and we were on our way. The highway was great and we moved right along for two hours on our way to Bwali. Bwali is a small town and the highway is its main street. Every workday morning, we would get up and head to the transmitter site, which looked like this, just an open field when we started. Our transmitter building was made of two 20-foot shipping containers that came from the United States by ship to Africa and then overland by truck to Bwali. This house belongs to the watchman who lives next to the transmitter building. Thievery is a problem, so everything has to be guarded 24 hours a day. Our work at the transmitter site began with sorting out all the equipment and supplies that had been shipped from the United States some seven months earlier. The shortwave antenna that was going to be used at this site occupies several acres, and one of our first tasks was to do a survey and set up some stakes to make sure everything was oriented properly so that the radio signal would cover the whole country. Like most shortwave antennas, this one was made of wires strung between poles. Our next job was to assemble these poles made from treated beams purchased from a lumber yard in Indiana and shipped in the containers to Africa. Before the poles could be put in place, we had to have some anchors made and footings poured on which to set the poles. We had a delay in the project when we had to have the anchors remade because the original plans that we sent were in inches but the welder thought they were in centimeters, so the first set of anchors was exactly two and a half times too small. Once the concrete had cured, we were ready to start putting up the poles and hang the antenna on them.
The antenna poles were now up, and most of the wires strung between them. But there was still work to be done to prepare the antenna for use. We had to dig a trench and install a pipe to hold the transmission line, which carries the radio signal from the transmitter building to the antenna, and then install long copper wires spaced about a meter apart, the full length of the antenna, to provide an artificial ground. The shortwave antenna was now nearly complete. Don and Jeremy climbed the makeshift extension ladder and added the final components to the antenna. At the same time as Jeremy and Don were working on the shortwave antenna, Kurt and I worked on the studio and the satellite dishes. These satellite dishes will help improve communication between the sites that ICDI operates, and they will provide ways to deliver programs to the radio station. Once the concrete had set and the ground rods were installed, we were ready to mount the satellite dish. When the satellite dish was mounted and set up, we were ready to call the network operations center back in the United States to connect us to the internet. However, after over an hour of being on the satellite phone, we were still unable to connect to the internet and had to go back to the drawing board to figure out what was wrong. After carefully disassembling and reassembling nearly everything, we tried the next morning, and the system worked well. It turned out that the real problem was back at the satellite company in the United States. Now that the satellite internet connection in Bwali was complete. I was sent on 150 miles to the west to set up the satellite connection in the town of Berberati. Once my work in Berberati was complete, I returned to Bwali to work with Kurt to complete the studio. We built the studio inside one of the steel 20-foot shipping containers. An African from Cameroon helped design it and was careful to make sure that it would work as well as possible. Given the conditions and materials with which we had to work, now nearly complete, we showed the Africans how the transmitter and studio equipment worked, and we were ready to go on the air with a test broadcast. On February twenty-first, we went on the air with a test broadcast. I wish you could have seen the faces of the Africans as they began operating a radio station that was their own that they could use to serve their people. Et il faut aussi parler de l'évolution exponentielle de la C'est dans le monde d'aujourd'hui jouer un rôle très très important. Donc the Africans listened in the field as the station went on the air for the first time. They were overjoyed with the thought that they now had their own station reaching the entire country with the gospel. One of the factors that made this project possible was partnership. It was great to be part of this team that helped start this new work in this poor country with people who have a vision to serve the Lord. We praise God for the privilege of partnering with others to bring hope through Jesus Christ to the people of Africa. <laughs>